We're going to have our welcome and occasion by Lady Renan Chef. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I just want to welcome each and every one of you to our third annual Women of Distinction Fellowship. Each and every one of you, I want you to know you're an answer to prayer. You're here because somebody prayed for you, so I just want to thank you for joining us on today. And I'm excited about these fellowships because we have women here at different stages of your walk with God. So this is a time for us to brace each other in love and also have a good time and hear what the Lord is saying to us on today. Hallelujah. So I want to begin with just describing what is a woman of distinction. A woman of distinction is somebody who loves the skin she's in. Because we understand we're made in his image and in his likeness. We're surrendered to God so that we can live a life of integrity. We understand that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. However, he gave us a breastplate of righteousness so that we could be called the righteousness of God. We understand that we are a holy nation, a world priesthood. And we also understand that we're more than conquerors. We're overcomers. That being said, we're not victims to whatever Satan just wants to do. But we are equipped with the full armor of God. The helmet of salvation. We have the mind of Christ. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We have our loins girded about with the belt of truth. Oh, yeah. We have the shoes of preparation to spread the gospel of peace. We have the sword of the spirit of God in the shield of faith. Oh, yeah. We are equipped. We stand emboldened with the truth of the word oh, yeah. in brazen opposition to the powers of darkness. Yes. I can be in peace where there's strife, where there's bitterness, where there's sickness and dissension all around me. Why can I be in peace? Because when we praise and when we pray, our worship reaches and moves the very heart of God. Our theme today is surrender. And to begin to understand surrender, you have to first understand God's heart for you. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you. This is God speaking to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son, and didn't come into the world to condemn the world, My God. but by through him, we might have a life and have it more abundant. What a great God we serve. He's concerned about you. Yes. He's so meticulous and so intentional My that God. even the hairs on your head are numbered. My great God. And when you were in your mother's womb, he fashioned you My and God. he knew you. Yes. What we hope you gain from today's fellowship is the confidence to give your control, your pain, your scars over to Jesus. Yes. Surrender is giving God free reign in every area of your life. By obeying his word, submitting to spiritual leadership, yes. and serving, doing kingdom work on earth. If we, with complete trust in him, put everything in our faithful creator's hands, we will find our purpose, we'll find our gifts, satisfying relationships, and everlasting life. Amen.
for action. Hallelujah. So we're going to, we're just before um, the next person comes up, we're going to praise God right now. Oh, and yeah. just give him glory. Oh, yeah. Give him glory. Hallelujah. For my life, I give him glory. Hallelujah. For the activities of my limbs, I give him glory. Hallelujah. I didn't have to be here, but I give him glory.
Johnny. Ebony Hunter is a masterpiece made from heaven at the age of 27. I've got a destination in my view. The road may be bumpy getting there, but I'm pressing through. I will enjoy this journey. No matter I'll become better and stronger and wiser every day. I've got a vision and a purpose, a divine destiny. It may not look like it right now, but faith ain't what I
praise and worship. Now we'll receive uh, Lady Adrian White. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, give him praise. I feel the spirit of God in this place. Come on. Let's continue to worship. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, I need to hear your voices. Let's exalt his name. Hallelujah. You've been a good God, oh God. You saved us from ourselves, oh God. You've been a way out of no way, oh God. We bless your name. You've been an answer to prayer, Father. You've healed us. You've answered our hopes and dreams, Father God. We thank you for redirection, oh God. We thank you for being the answer, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Woo. Mm. Woo. I thought I knew what I was going to say, and then I saw her ministry. Oh, my God. And then I just... So I'm at a pause, y'all. I'm sorry. I just... Mm. Come on, give him praise. First song, you know, um, just play a little bit. There was so much in what she said. Yeah, 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 yeah. So much. Yeah. There was so much courage yeah. in what she showed. Yeah. Uh, I've heard a lot of people's story, but I've never seen anything like that before. Oh, if she was here, I'd tell her thank you so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I believe every single one of us in this room needed to see that. Yeah. Removing the mask. I've always been a sensitive person. And I think, um, I know that when I was a kid, my mom admits to trying to eradicate my sensitivity. She thought I was going to break and the world was going to be way too heavy for this sensitive heart of mine. My mom was uh, emotionally and physically abusive. She didn't, I didn't always remember her that way. Um, when I was very young, she was the sweetest mom ever. I remember the first time she was going to whoop us. You know, my dad told her to whoop us and she cried. She cried for like three or four minutes before she even had to lift one hand to whoop me. And as I got older, she saw so much of me and her broken self that she said, oh my God, this world is going to choke you up. It's going to break you down and you've got to be tougher. She said, so I, I grew up feeling as though it was a weakness to cry, simply to cry. What I'm standing here in front of you doing right now, I grew up thinking that this was wrong, that this was weak, and that this would break me. This would be the one thing that would take me down. And so it took me some time to get back to myself. And I think, you know, the Bible says a broken and a contrite spirit God will not despise. It's really in our weakness that he is made strong. So the way God sees strength is completely different than the way that we see strength. Amen? Amen. And so many times we as women, we think that we have to be the strongest one in the room. We think we have to be the most knowledgeable one in the conversation. We think that we have to be the most spiritual one in the stance. And really, I think the strong one is the one that can receive from her sister. Because really... Because I believe that God has given each and every one of us some sort of excellence. Amen. And while we think we're so strong, and while we think that we are so knowledgeable that what does God tell me for you, I really should be asking, what has God told you for me? And I think that once we really open up our lives to this new way of thinking and perspective, we can see that, that God has created us like him. Amen? Amen that we are sons and daughters of the most high God, that he created us to dwell with us, to walk with us. So if we're all walking with God, amen, if we are all talking to this wonderful person called Jesus, then we've got something to give each other, amen. And I've learned that typically it's through my tears. You know, my best friend, and I'm off script, just so you know. 
I am abandoned what I was about to say. So my best friend, she blessed me. Um, we were eating with my dad, um, and she told my, my dad that the reason why she loved me and knew that I loved her, really the reason why she knew that I loved her, she said, Adrian is such a strong person. She was such a strong person. And I was just hurting her so bad that in tears, she said, Ebony, you can't keep treating people like this. If you keep treating people like this, you're not going to have anybody. And I remember that. I hadn't remembered it for years, but I remember it very differently from the way she remembered it. I remembered it like, God, this girl is breaking my heart. I literally feel like a knife is cutting me every single time I talk to her. God, I don't want to be her friend anymore. I am done, Jesus. Anybody got those kind of friends? The friends where you want to be done? And he's like, go on and take it because it ain't about you. Anybody have heard that from God? Well, I had heard that from God concerning her for one year. A whole year, I cried and I cried and I cried in secret. And I'm like, God, you have not called me to her. <laughs> Surely not her. And so literally, the moment that she was telling my dad was the moment that I have come to my edge. That I was like, okay, God, I hear what you're saying, but no, uh-uh. I'm going to tell, tell her about herself today. I'm going to tell her. I'm going to tell her all. And I was not going to tell her in tears. And literally in mid-conversation, I break down this strong person who she perceives me to be. And I'm like, I can't take it anymore. I love you. And so in the way she told the story, she said, that's how I knew that you loved me. That's how I knew it. And from that moment on, she's changed her life so much. I'm so proud of her. She's a single mom. She's got three kids. She's in school right now. She was um, very depressed when she went through a divorce, but God has just really, really done a work in her. And I really think that's about me removing the mask. Um, just a testimony, I'm one of five kids, my mom said I would be the least of my siblings. She said I wouldn't be anything. I was told I was stupid, I was dumb, I was incapable. I, I do have a little bit of ADD, I, I must admit. She was not too far off in some of her confusion. <laughs> But, you know, I have a master's, I, um, I, and I'm not telling you what I make so that you can go, oh, wow, she makes a lot of money. But let me tell you, the, the, the money that I had prayed for, I make it. Um, I make over and above. And I'm telling you that because somebody told you that you weren't going to be anything. Somebody told you that you were the least in your family. Somebody told you that you were not smart enough, that you were not pretty enough, that you were not strong enough, and that you won't make it. Somebody told you that you were not going to be the CEO. Somebody told you that you were not qualified to be the executive. Somebody told you that you were not the manager. Somebody told you that you st st stutter too hard when you talk. Somebody told you that you have ADD. Somebody told you that you are not the management type. Somebody told you that you were not enough. And you believed it. And so I'm here to tell you that you are, no, you are more than enough. And why? Because in Christ, amen, and it's not just something that I say, it's something that I live, amen. Come on, in Christ, we are new creatures, hallelujah. We can do anything that we put our minds to, amen, because he lives in us and through us. So Testimony bought a house, um, my first home last year. That's glory to God, because I'm letting you know because of what my mom told me I was not. That's the part of this testimony, removing the mask. Everything that she said would be my failure was actually my strength. I learned that maybe that sensitivity was what I absolutely had to operate in. Somebody's telling you that those tears are not a part of your strength, but that's exactly what your strength is. You just have to learn how to control that emotion. But I'm not going to preach. I'm actually going to sing. But I just want to let you know that of, of all of my brothers and sisters, I am what the world would consider the most successful. I am the one the least expected. And I think that's how God works. That is exactly how God works. So if you are the least expected, amen, if you are the last person that they would expect to be successful and to be prosperous and to be an overcomer, then he's here for you when he's speaking to you. Amen. Amen.
And we're just going to, I'm not going to sing this one all the way through. We're just going to all say God is good. Amen. Has he been good to you? He's been good to me. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, because you are the more than enough God. You are the way maker. You are the provider. You are Jehovah Jireh, God. We thank you, Father God, that you are real, that you are present, and that you answer prayer, oh God. As we take off these masks, as every woman in this room searches for whatever that mask is and she unveils herself, we can let you know, Father God, that we want you to come in and have your way. Amen? Anybody here want to stand and testify and tell about love? A love that carried you through. Anybody got a testimony? Anybody here want to lift their hand up high and tell all about love? A love that carried you through. He is worthy of all of our praise. Let's celebrate and give him the glory. God is good. Yes, he is. God is so good. He's so of your love to me. You're the giver of all hope, love, and peace. Let your love always surround me. I adore you. Anybody adore Jesus? Just because of you, you are. Because of who you are. We adore you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
You're the giver of all hope, love, and peace. Let your love always surround me. I adore you, Jesus.
for this particular open door because of the hearts of the people that are in this place. I love you. I love you from the depths of my heart. I love you. Amen. I'm not going to be before you long, but I do discern there is an assignment in this place. Amen. I honor the Lord for who he is. And just like you, I'm still standing. Just like you, I'm still here. But I ain't here empty. I'm here with a praise down in my soul. I'm here with a praise because God has been good to me.
You go pick up some demons and get on the altar and want your pastor to pray a man. Oh, God. Oh, God. Tell somebody not in this season where ain't going to be doing that. Lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, Lord help this mind of mine. Give me some wisdom. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I love the theme of this conference. I love. Uh, I, I, see, I made up my own name. All right. All right. Total surrender, distinct one. All right. <laughs> oh, see, like, you can't be distinct if you ain't surrendered. All right. Now, yeah, you know. All right. But one thing about it is, Anna was separated. He, she had a certain pose by, by, about herself because of what she had in Luke. All right, all right. And, and, and over in Luke, in the second chapter, where it's talking about how her husband died and how, you know, talked about how long they was married and she was a widow and she was in the temple. Yes. The Bible says she prayed and worshiped night and day. Yeah. Right, right. So what can we learn from this beautiful woman of God that oh, God. suffered hardship and, and grief? Mm -hmm. She didn't let that detour her. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. Because she's out here waiting until I know the truth. All right, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tired of the true Messiah is coming. All right. She was a prophetess. Yes, yes. yes. And I come to tell you, many, 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 many of you have calls, and you have mandates, and you have assignments, and yes. trouble hit your life, so you threw it in the side. Oh, God. Oh, God. Because you thought trouble came, you wouldn't call. Yes, yes, yes. But tell somebody trouble is part of the call. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You ain't going to be anointed and sit up and look cute. That's right. That's right. That ain't trouble. My great God. You know, she was seasoned, and then God reminded yeah. me about this, a story that he, he, he uh, I heard or read somewhere. It talked about these two couples who lived next door to each other. My God, my God. One was a seasoned couple, mm -hmm. and one was a newlywed couple. Mm -hmm. So the newlywed wife asked her husband, carry me over. The threshold through the door, like the couple next door. All right, all right. My God. My God. Pick me up and take me. Yeah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so he had to start watching what the season husband next door was doing. Right oh, yes, oh, yes. Because the newlywed. The younger couple, he, he, he didn't know what he was like. I, I, look, we just started. All right, all right. And a lot of times, God will call us to do something. All right. We'll start out running with Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We'll start out in our families. Because over here, my arm looks like I got trouble, I got finances, I got your marriage on fire, and your ministry on fire. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. But some of it has not been seasoned. And so all the young girls, the newlywed couple doing, she just watched what looked easy. But as the years grew, the seasoned couple, the older couple, the weight that he was carrying got heavier. So what does it like to you? Because of your perception of where I am. All right. Oh, God. You got a coach? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got this Michael Cole that somebody gave me. All right.
was designed. Oh. Oh. All right. Oh, God. Coach. Oh, God. Oh, God. This was designed to carry my stuff. Just a little bit. But it was still designed for me to carry. Oh, God. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. But you can't see what's in my stuff. I just want a Michael Kors because you got one. <laughs> watching the season couple don't know what time it took to be built to carry what was designed for you. Go on with your pen and your paper out. And if you don't leave with nothing else from this con, you leave with me. I was built to bear and anointed to carry. Built means I was designed yes. for specific use. Mm -hmm. Carry me. This thing is conditioned. Oh. And the weight of it. Yes. See, one thing I learned. You got your own cross to bear. Yes. I can't carry your cross. Because what the easy yeah. for you may not be here. I was built to care. I was built to bear and anointed to care. What do you carry? Whatever God put in you. Some of you are mothers. Some of you are single mothers. Some of you are wives. Some of you are sisters and daughters. But I want you to know you were built for this. You were tailor made for this. I don't care what happened when you were a little girl. It was designed with a plan. Even though it tried to make you crazy, it couldn't overtake. Tell your neighbor, it didn't overtake you. You sit here, aren't you? Yes, 
But when you know you've been called by God, if my name ain't on the program, I'm going to sit and change the atmosphere. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. The church is too small. I can't come there. Oh. What? I haven't church out of a hotel. No. Yeah. Are you going to put me on the radio? Yeah. No. You all need to be on the radio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lord, ain't none of this on these notes. Help me, Father God. Because we're in the cast of Washington. Right. You know I know all of it. I'm concerned that some of y'all getting tangled up with all this foolishness. Mm -hmm. And then you wonder why God ain't working things out for you. Mm -hmm. Baby, you better cut some folk off. All right, all right. And yeah. some of y'all God has placed in people's lives to tell them the truth about themselves. Yeah. 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 But you don't want to tell it because you don't want to lose their friendship. All right. Baby, I would lose a friendship and live. With my conscience clear, my hands clear, my heart clear. Because holiness is right. Holiness is right. Holiness is right. And ain't nothing about you doing what you doing is holy. When you prostituting God's people. All right. Ain't nobody getting saved, ain't nobody getting delivered, ain't nobody getting filled with the Holy Ghost. But like that little couple, you looking out the window, seeing what they doing, and trying to bring it over there and do it and work for you. Uh huh. You know what the Lord told me? No more performance and entertainment in the body of Christ. Because there's no power. See, there are some atmospheres that I go to, I'm glad there's no music. Because now these musicians are trying to push the preachers to another place that they ain't even been called to. Right. And, you got a point and it's there. called entertainment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no power. Mm -hmm. There's no deliverance. All right. Nobody gets set free. They ain't gonna have an altar call no more. All There's right. no tearing service. Mm -hmm. Where are the Trevelyan women? Oh God. Oh God. You were built for this. I don't care what you've been going through. I don't care what's been in your face. I don't care what obstacle, opposition, what trial. I don't care what has been in your face telling you that it was not. Let me get it in your face. My telling God. you that it was not going to happen. Thank you, Lord. But I hear the Holy Ghost say, tell the woman of God, many of the afflictions of the righteous. Yes. But God shall deliver you out of them all. My God. Uh, they were built for it. They just tried to put your legs on. All right. To kill the mobility that was in you to make things happen because right. of the pureness of your heart. Oh, and yeah, and by the way, they've been cursed with a curse. But that that they tried to play you with. Alright. Uh-huh. Oh yes, they have they, they yeah, 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 yeah. 2015 almost broke you down. You almost lost your mind. But God Himself sustained you. Oh yes.
everybody else has a next cup. Grain of wheat. Yes. Fall into the ground and die. Help us, sister. Help us. It abides alone, but it wouldn't die when it falls into the right. You got to know that you're in the right soil, baby. Yeah. Yeah. What soil is your? Oh, God. Some of y'all been paying tithes and offerings and seed, and your finances have been under attack. As a matter of fact, your finances have been cursed. Oh, baby, go back and check the soil. My God. My God. Yes. Yes. Because when you know you died of self, you ought to be produced. Anna was a woman to produce. There was production going on. She was an encourager. She was a courageous woman. Yes, yes. Tell your neighbor, it's time for you to produce. Some of y'all been in dead relationships and dead marriages. It's time for you to produce. Take it to the word. Take it to the feet of Jesus. Fast and pray as Anna did. And don't come out until you get an answer from God. Beautifully and wonderfully made. 
Oh yes. Oh, yes. Let me tell you, he's about to promote you. Spiritually, emotionally, financially, he is about to promote you. Everything that you lost, he said, tell her I'm giving it back to her dog. Your hands are anointed to possess that that God has for you. Release and let it go. It don't matter what they did. They didn't know what they doing. Come on, some of us people say, Father, forgive them for they knew not what they were doing. Turn around and tell your sister, and it is. You thought you were gonna die in this, but you weren't designed to die. We were built to bear. 
Father, we thank you for Pastor and Lady Washington. We bless you for them and the assignment you have given them. Father, we bless you for the wisdom, the courage, the example. We bless you for them being the couple next door with wisdom that the newlywed watch the man carry. But he didn't understand that he was built for this. Father, we thank you for multiplying. We thank you for the increase coming here. I'm closing. I'm done. Those things God has. Y'all point your hand up here and tell her, expect. Expect. Oh, hiya. Expect. Expect. Because you're about to deliver. <laughs> tell her, push. Push. The big baby's got to come forth. Yes. So I admonish you to see it into the soul. Yes. Yes. 